Hi, I'm Bethany Black and I play 474 in Sleep No More. I am an actor and comedian. I'd say I think out of all of them, I think I probably want to travel with uh, Patrick Troughton's Doctor. I loved the way that Patrick Troughton's performance of it, like the, the first person to go and take on a new Doctor, to go, right, okay, well this is what William Hartnell's done, I'm going to do something else with it. And him, just the way that, like, I love all of his, I love that really old stories, but just his Doctor had such a way of, like, turning emotionally doing a, 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 like a 180 in such a small amount of time it's just it's beautiful to watch and uh, yeah and so I, I think if I could travel with any of them I would like to travel with, with Patrick Troughton. Ace definitely definitely Ace when I was growing up I wanted to be Ace um, I pretended that I'd created explosives in fact I lied to my school friends to tell them that I created my own explosives like Nitro 9 at home. Um, also, one of the only, other than River Song, one of the only other companions to get their own Sonic uh, in the form of the Sonic baseball bat, um, which, you know, totally, the kid that I was, that totally spoke to me when I was growing up. It's really interesting watch, going back and watching her storyline now. There's, there's things like in The Curse of Fenric and Ghost Light where she's sort of caught in that, as she's growing up, um, finding who she is and for you know someone who isn't you know for someone from the LGBT community watching that and going oh right okay it, it kind of gave an extra little edge to it when I was growing up to see someone who there was, there was no one like me on television when I was growing up and Ace came the closest to that and I and that was the first time I really connected with one of the Doctor's companions. Oh, the the uh, the Weeping Angels. They are the I am the most scared of those. I remember watching Blink on the night that it was on. I didn't get to watch it when it went out trans, uh, when it was transmitted because I was working. Um, I was doing a gig somewhere, and I drove home to my parents' house uh, up on the Lancashire Moors and sat and watched it in my parents' house in the middle of nowhere, off in the countryside, and was absolutely petrified. And halfway through, a little stone statuette that they had on the mantelpiece fell off. And I just freaked out and got every little statuette and 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 um, figurine and all that and took them up to my parents' room because my mum had a floor-to-ceiling mirror and I was thinking ahead and going, right, okay, if they're quantum locked, as long as they're looking at themselves in the mirror, they can't possibly hurt me. Um, and then there was a power cut. Everything went pitch black and I was like, Whoa! Ran, jumped in the car and drove off to one of my friends in Manchester, just like spent an hour in the car to drive off to go and make sure that I could be around other people. So yeah, I think the Weeping Angels are probably the thing I'm most scared of. Uh, Fort to Doomsday episode two. That was my first that I watched and I realised that because when I... Uh, I'd been... My, my partner is from Sweden and she'd never seen Doctor Who. Um, and she had no idea about Doctor Who at all and when we first got together we started watching it and we watched all of the, the new stuff from, um, from Christopher Eccleston right the way through and then we started watching the old stuff and we've gone through all of that and it was only when I got to Fort of Doomsday episode 2 that I suddenly went this is my earliest memory, this is my earliest television memory at least um, and I remember watching that and going in and seeing it on the TV and finding it so enthralling and so repulsive and having to run out and run back in and watch little three-year-old me just like running oh no it's too much um so yeah that was that was my first episode that i can remember watching on a rainy day i tend to be at my happiest because it means that there is no pressure on me to leave my house so i tend to like to sort of sit there and find one that i can really connect emotionally with and i think um if there's one that has made me, that I connect with emotionally more than any other, it's the two-parter um, Family of Blood, um, Human Nature, uh, which just so much about that, the, the Doctor being his most alien self, the Doctor just not, um, the, you know, it, it, he is his most alien when he's being human, when he's entirely human and he doesn't fully, you know, that the fact that he hasn't, hasn't even factored in that he'll fall in love, that he hasn't considered what will happen if he has all of the human emotions. Um, that is a story that I connect with so much and find myself in, in the second episode from the point 
when the doctor sees the TARDIS on the back of the cart. From that point in, I am in floods of tears. There is no consoling by the end of it. Like big, snotty, sort of, <laughs> oh God. By the end, yeah, that's the one that I'll, I'll sit and watch. But anything from that, um, and I like a bit of John Sim hamming it up as the master as well. I really like that. Uh, I'd, I'd have to go to the future. I'd have to go to the future sometime. Again, it's that thing, if you're not a straight white guy, then then the past is probably not for you. Um, <laughs> you know, if you want to go somewhere where you can minimise the risk of of, of of anything nasty happening, you know, head off into the future. I think I'd like to go and... Um, I'd like to go and see the end of the world, you know, in episode two of season one with, with Christopher Eccleston. I'd like to go and see go and see our sun expand and, and and time disappear. I go everywhere. That's it, that's the thing. I'm so scared of dying. I'm so scared that that when it's like I've only got like a set amount of time and there's not enough time to do everything that I'd want to do. Um the TARDIS doesn't even give you that, you know, you are such a tiny blip in the whole of history. Um to just be able to go and break beyond the confines of that and be able to go and see what's happening in a different distant galaxy, to see what's going to happen, what's going to become of everything, to travel to the end of the universe and, and be able to look back through the whole of history and at least, you know, then just get the edited highlights, not have to do the boring shortcut bit, it'd just be absolutely fantastic. I'm a comic book nerd as well as a Doctor Who fan. Um, growing up, I read uh, The Punisher and X-Men religiously. And these days I read you know, Spider-Man and I'm a big Marvel Comics fan. I, I collect those and um, one of the first things that I bought when I when I suddenly had money for the first time when I was casting Cucumber and Banana by Russell T. Davies last year was uh, I went out and got some, some of the rarer comics that I'd had my eye on. I was like, oh, I can actually afford to buy this now. Um, including probably my favourite titles of the Marvel comics that someone really should have told Stan Lee, you can't call a comic book giant-sized man-thing.